Hi folks, I'm Steve Hindy for Showing Animals Respect and Kindness. My friends Beth and Merrick Clifton, who run an online animal news website called Animals 24-7, just put up a piece that, if anyone was paying attention, should cause serious, serious outrage in the animal protection community. The title goes, Animal Labs Get Free Passes on Inspections AV Groups Mostly Don't Notice. AV means anti-vivisection. Those mega million dollar groups include names like the American Anti-Vivisection Society, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the Humane Society of the United States, In Defense of Animals, the National Anti-Vivisection Society, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA, and others. Unfortunately, the inattention to what is going on in the realm of vivisection is indicative of what is happening elsewhere in animal protection. Animal protection groups today, especially the big ones, do very, very little for animals. The effort of these groups are directed more at fundraising than action to help animals. It's really just another form of animal exploitation. There are exceptions, such as Last Chance for Animals, the Humane Farming Association, Fish Feel, and a number of others. I've seen those people in the field and they take action. They are not hoarding hundreds of millions of dollars while relentlessly begging for more. But generally, self-enrichment has become the name of the game in animal protection today, not animal protection, and that is an appalling reality. The other day I was talking to someone in the movement whom I've known for years. He's worked in a number of animal organizations. He referenced those big groups as zombie groups, as those who are mainly dead. The only remnant of life remaining is aimed at fundraising. There's little, if any, real effort at making a better world for animals. Today, big groups especially cater to whims and egos of their big donors, and how to tug at the heartstrings of new suckers. So long as the money keeps rolling in, that's good enough for those groups. Gone are the ethics, morals, or conscience. Gone is the real work of saving animals. Zombie groups. My friend hit it right on the head. Today, that's the bulk of animal protection, and it really sucks. It's not really a movement anymore. Today's animal protection is far more an industry, and that whole nonprofit thing, forget about it. In many ways, animal protection today is more of a cult similar to today's Republican Party. Statements and positions are no longer judged by truth or accuracy, but rather, how well does it comport with the party line? And whatever you do, don't criticize the dear leaders. There was a time when Shark and I would go to animal conferences to try to infuse some energy and action into the movement. We would show people our high pods and our drones and high-powered cameras and other technology accomplishing great strides for animals. We wanted people to get involved, be it with us, with other groups, or on their own. But this approach entails curiosity, active training, active thought, perhaps of the most concern, work, hard work in weather extremes and dangerous and unfriendly environments. Finding productivity in animal protection these days is like trying to find a T-bone steak in a vegan restaurant. Empty platitudes are far more popular because they require a lot less effort. Movement leaders didn't care much for the things I said at their little soirees. They didn't like it when I pointed out that weak leaders, like them, resulted in weak followers. That's an indisputable fact that applies everywhere, be it an army, a corporation, a family, and most certainly a movement. Weak leaders in animal protection have led to groups doing almost nothing of substance and followers who think that this is okay, while millions and billions of animals die. I've often said that the animals deserve a far, far better movement. You can imagine how well that goes over with those weak leaders, but it's true. I'd love to sit at a discussion table to expand on that subject, but that will never happen simply because my claim would be so easy to prove. As a result of speaking the truth about the pitiful state of animal protection and openly saying what others think privately, Shark has largely been ostracized from the movement. Beth and Merrick Clifton, who I mentioned earlier, 
are also considered outliers because they were speaking truth to power even before there was a shark. Given the way that things are, I'm proud to stand with the Cliftons. If you care about animals, and especially if you donate to animal protection groups, please research carefully before you send your hard-earned money. If it doesn't help the animals, what's the point? In Shark's case, we actually encourage our donors to join us on the front line if they can, so they can see our efforts firsthand. For those that can't join us on the front lines, our over 1,400 videos on YouTube and on our website show our hard field work and the resulting successes for our animal friends. I'm Steve Hindy for showing animals respect and kindness. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel to see more of our investigations and learn what you can do to help shark help animals. If you'd like to support Shark directly and gain access to exclusive content, please consider sponsoring us on Patreon.